Trade Pros, Ferguson is proud to be a part of what you do. With over 1,000 one-stop shop U.S. counter locations, expert associates, and an unmatched selection of the go-to and hard-to-find OEM repair products you need, visit ferguson.com and find a counter location near you. Is there anything better than fall golf? The crisp air leaves turning faster rounds because there's not as many golfers on the course. But some days it does get seriously chilly. That's why you'll love the new Perth pullover from Peter Millar. I got to tell you, it instantly cuts out the cold. It's like being wrapped in a hot towel. So while other guys in your foursome are frozen solid after a few hours, and it'll show in their play, you'll be super comfortable. Not only is the Perth perfect to wear out on the course, it feels great and looks even better. It fits like a second skin. It moves with you so you don't even notice it when you swing. But I got to tell you, I like wearing it even more when I'm not playing. People that see me wearing it tell me how nice it looks and ask me where they can get one. Trust me, you'll win style points around the office when you pair it with jeans on a business casual day. The Perth looks great over a polo shirt or a sports shirt. Do yourself a favor. Get yourself a Perth pullover today. You and your golf game will thank me. Right now, head over to PeterMillar.com slash Wingo to get yours. And while you're there, check out some of my other Peter Millar favorites that I picked out for you to see. Be sure to use my link and you'll receive complimentary shipping and a free hat. That's Peter Millar, M-I-L-L-A-R.com slash Wingo. PeterMillar.com slash Wingo. It is a beautiful day. The day before Thanksgiving. The day where we all anticipate getting together with friends and family and loved ones we haven't seen forever. And then they get back, and we realize, when can they leave? Yeah, we don't have as much in common as we thought anymore. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we all have this idea in our heads, Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio and ESPN News. <laughs> the holidays are wonderful. The kids are coming home. Hey, I haven't seen you in six months. And then you're there and you realize... This is why I haven't talked to you in yeah, six months. Yeah, figure you're going to sit down and have a chat, and they go out. Yeah. How, how long does it take for the worm to turn at your house? The worm to well, turn? Well, in other words, you've never heard that phrase? I've heard the phrase. Okay. I'm trying to say in what, in what other way words, are Oh, you... it's all wonderful, and then get out. You're driving me crazy. Oh, uh, yeah, not long. Yeah, it doesn't or take you just kind of start doing your own thing again. Yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, great, how yeah. are you? All right, well, I'm going to go do this. Yeah, you're yeah. Do that. Do what I but we did do. this thing, right? Yeah, we did yeah. the good thing. So we're, we're good all for good. another year. We're good for yeah. another year. Yeah. So that's the way it goes in holidays. Let's just be clear. Hopefully, a lot of people are already where they need to be. Yeah. Hopefully, a lot oh, of people yeah. are getting there. Oh, yeah. Hope everybody's safe getting there. A lot of big, safe. big travel. Yeah. It's crazy. No, at the airports or on the roads or the trains, whatever, your frustration level is going to be pushed. So just be patient, and we'll all get through this together. All right. Uh, we are looking forward to the Thanksgiving holiday for food, obviously, mm-hmm. for football. And for me especially, a little bit of spicy golf. Yeah, absolutely right. Between Tiger and Phil Mickelson. And for more on this, we want to bring in our next guest. And I need to do a little explaining. Okay, I I said coming up next, the bread truck in the last hour. For those that don't know, that have you know the intention span of millennials, like Stanzik, seven seconds. um, Basically, Charles Barkley, his nickname in college at Auburn was the bread truck. Right, that was his mo. Big dude, cleared people out. In fact, he didn't make the 84 Dream Team, and one of the Sports Illustrated articles about that 84 Dream Team, an NBA scout was there and said, if they cut the bread truck, I'm pulling for the Russians. Yeah, That's how good Barkley was uh, during those tryouts. So with that in mind, the bread truck, TNT NBA analyst Charles Barkley joins us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. What's up, Chuck? How we doing? Hey, man, happy Thanksgiving to you guys in America. Hey. Uh, to, to, to you as well, Charles, without question. And and obviously there's a lot of basketball to, to talk about, but understanding that this golf match coming up Friday with Tiger and Phil, that you're doing the pregame of that with Samuel L. Jackson, A, I hope there's a dump button, and B, <laughs> I mean, what, what are your expectations for this golf match? Well, uh, I, just to have fun. I mean, it's going to be me, Sam, and Pat Perez. So we're just going to have fun. I mean, obviously, we're not going to get on. The Pat is obviously a professional. Sam is a great golfer. I'm a hack. So my only objective is to have fun. You know, TNT asked me what I do it, and I said, hell no. And like, no, you're going to do it. And I'm like, okay, hell yes. <laughs> That's the way it goes in most situations. Hey, we want you to do this. No, uh, we pay you. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all good. But oh, how- no, no, they, I didn't say they were paying me. They haven't mentioned pay. Wow, so this is really out of the kindness of your heart. But you you get to see, what do you think of the golf? How do you think this is going to go? Well, I think it's going to be fun because, Phil, you know, Tiger, is, if, if Tiger's going to loosen up, I think that's going to be the key. Listen, I've known Phil Mickelson forever. Like, he loves to have fun. He loves to trash talk. So I think this is going to be his natural environment. 
you know, the key to me is going to be if Tiger lets people see his personality, uh, I think that's going to be the key because, you know, they got the – it's going to be them out there by themselves. It's not going to be David Faraday, who's fantastic. It's not going to be a Roger Malby, you know, uh, or, or Peter Costas, those guys who are great. It's going to really be those two guys trying to have fun playing golf. Well, listen, we've already got 200000 wagered in their own money on the first hole, whether or not Phil, Phil uh, birdies it. We had Michael Collins, our golf analyst, on. He says no way Phil's making that. So Tiger should be two two k up, 200 k up before they get to the second tee, which is a nice feeling. But listen, trying to loosen Tiger up, you tried on a, on a little uh, pre, uh, pre-match pre interview when you, when you asked Tiger if he was ready to come on home. Now, for those that don't know, that's when you have a receding hairline and you're trying to hang on to those follicles like grim death. Right. And you were suggesting just shave it back like you did and Jack did, and, and Tiger was not ready to go there. You know, uh, you know, it's so funny when guys uh, – because, listen, it was traumatic for me when I started going ball at 25. It's traumatic, but at some point you have to make a decision like, you know what, it's only, it's only going to get worse before it gets better. So I always say you do a preemptive strike. Don't wait till people say, man, what's going on with his hairline? Uh, but you know what, I am so looking forward to just having some fun. That's a great golf course. Uh, I played that golf course many times. Not that that matters, uh, but you got two of the, you got the greatest golf who ever lived in Tiger Woods, and you probably got the best shot maker, short game guy in Phil Mickelson who ever lived. So, listen, like I say, we just got to have some fun, man. It's Thanksgiving weekend. It's my favorite holiday of the year. You know, Christmas sucks because people just want stuff. <laughs> but I, I love. I was watching you guys with Michael earlier. You guys were talking about. What's the best thing about Thanksgiving is deep-fried turkeys, man. I get There's a great place in Arizona called Baby K's. I get two big deep-fried turkeys every year. That's the best thing about Thanksgiving. Well, And the best thing there is letting somebody else deep-fry it so you don't start a fire at your own home like Correct. so many people do. So that's, that's the smart way. We're talking to Charles Barkley, TNT NBA analyst, and we'll certainly get to the basketball. But Trey mentioned, we already mentioned, $200,000 on the first hole. If you, you want to tell us the amount, you can, but I'm going to ask anyway. The most money you ever had on not a round of golf, but a shot, one shot or one hole, the most money you ever had wagered? Probably 5000 Uh That's probably pretty – like, that's actually well, – that was so long ago I can barely remember. I think 5000 is the most I've ever had oh, on, a, on a hole. Right. Just one hole, not one shot, but on one hole. Yeah, how dare you ask Charles Barkley about gambling on an ESPN? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, that was me a few years ago, Charles. Again, I'm sorry. That took an unexpected turn, but it was enjoyable all the way around. Hey, you know what? Hey, hey uh, listen, Trey. I tell people, I was doing a thing for TNT last week on diversity, and I told people, people make fun of me because I tell them I like to drink and I like to gamble. And I said, you know, the one thing I noticed, I've never been in a bar at a casino by myself. So other people <laughs> like it too. You are exactly right. You are not alone in those pursuits. And in literally an hour and 53 minutes, you That's won't be alone we're... today, exactly just so right. you know. We'll be lighting that thing early. All right, Charles Barkley is with us, TNT, TNT NBA analyst, all-around good guy. The bread truck. Uh, so you mentioned your golf swing, which you have – your own words described as a speech impediment because it get a little hitch in your giddy up there. Where are you on what we're seeing out of Markel Fultz and his free throws and his jump shot? How, how bad is this? How mental is it? You know, Trey, that's a great question. I, I, my heart hurts for him because it's different from him because he has to make his living playing basketball. You know, as long as I drink some beer and smoke some cigars, I'm going to have fun no matter how bad my golf is. But I feel so bad for him. Because he has to make his living. And when you get that mental block, and like I say, I can go out on the range and hit balls and don't hesitate, but then when I get out of the gun, uh, I guarantee he does not hesitate. He can shoot his regular free throw and jump shot until pressure when there's 20,000 people around and in the heat of an NBA game. So I really just feel bad for the kid because, man, people, you know, it, people are laughing at this kid. I hate that because this is his livelihood. Like, golf is not my livelihood, but this kid is 21 years old, maybe, and he's got a mental block, and, and I just feel bad because I hear he's a great kid. But, it's it, it, you know, it's not funny, man. This is – like, this This might end this guy's career if he's not able. We've seen it in other people's careers in other sports. 
I just hope he can get it together where he can just – I mean, he, this kid's the number one pick in the draft, and I just feel sad because I'm pulling for the kid. What, what, what can he – you know, if it's a physical thing like, like athletes, Charles, we know we just try and fix that, whether it's foot speed, strength, whatever. But in this case, what does he need to do? How, how does he work through this? Well, you know, Mike, I, 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 I've, I, I've told people – my biggest mistake with my golf was probably not going going to see a sports psychiatrist like uh, Dr. Ro- Bob Rotella or that guy Gio right. who's on the golf channel. They're both fantastic. I think, listen, you can't just keep shooting and keep shooting and shoot, keep shooting because all you do is reinforce bad habits. And I think Markel needs to see a sports psychiatrist or or, or 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 something because you just can't because like I say it, it shows up like on my golf swing it shows up when it's want to and I'm pretty sure Markel can't control how he shoots that free throw or jump shot I think he need to get and I, and I don't mean psychological like he got issues but like a sports psychiatrist I think he really needs that man because I like I say I just feel bad for the kid this is livelihood yeah it it is and listen the hard part is he's only twenty. You know what I mean? He's he's literally when you say a yeah. kid, he is literally a kid and his worst nightmare is being played out there in front of everybody. So hopefully we'll get that straightened. You mentioned a sports psychologist, Charles Barkley with is with us. Do the Warriors need a sports psychologist right now? They've lost three straight, potentially gonna lose four in a row to a hot uh OKC team tonight, and obviously there's a lot bubbling under the surface with Draymond and K D and everything else. Well, listen, number one, they're not gonna win a lot with until Steph comes back. But, you know, there's a lot of pressure on that whole Golden State organization. You know, Trey, you know, nobody wants to talk about it, but they really, you know, Kevin Durant made them a dynasty. You know, they had a good team uh, before he got there. He made them unbeatable. And they're moving into that big building next year that they paid for, you know, and they're going to be charging $20,000 a seat. If KD leaves there, you got an agent, Draymond Green, you got an agent, Steph Curry. You got an agent, uh, Andre Iguodala, and, and Sean Livingston, and they won't be the favorite to win the championship. So there's a lot of pressure on that organization to keep KD, uh, and that's what this whole thing is about. When I hear people talking about, well, why did they uh, find Draymond? Because Draymond needs to, hey, Draymond needs to shut up. Because hey, listen, we're a good team and we've been a dynasty, but we're a dynasty because KD came here. They won't be the same without KD, and they really need him going to that new building. You know, they, it is, I, I think it's a travesty. They leave in Oakland, which right. is an amazing fan base, but they took they took all the money to go to San Francisco, and they really need KD to keep the dynasty going, plain and simple. And, Chuck, just so people understand, because we talk about it all the time, they're not the same without Steph Curry, and Steve Kerr tries to explain it. But from a layman's perspective and a guy that's played this game, what is it about Steph specifically and the things he does that opens up this offense for everybody else? Well, it's about the spacing. You see, uh, Clay doesn't get wide open jumpers. Kevin don't get wide open jumpers because you have to, those guys. You have to guard those guys pretty much out the half court. So, Trey, there's a lot of space out there, but with no Steph. And just you can cheat off Draymond, you can treat off the cheat, cheat off the center, but when Steph is there, the floor is just so wide open for all three of those offensive geniuses. That's the difference. It's just about space. It's kind of like I use this analogy. We talk about in the NFL one on one coverage on a receiver. Like none of those, you have to cheat on those guys. None of those guys are guardable one on one. So when Steph's not there, you can double Julio Jones, you can double Antonio Bryan and Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, that's that's the best way to explain it. As far as what you see right now, 18 games in, however much you think the team is going to be the team, is there a team out there that has surprised you to the good and surprised you to the bad? Not that can beat the Warriors. I think the Memphis Grizzly has surprised me this year. Uh, B.J. Bickerstaff has done a fantastic job. Uh, they, are, they are a sleeper team. Uh, but I will say this. The Denver Nuggets, to me, are the second-best team in the Western Conference. I think when they get everybody healthy, Michael Porter Jr., Isaiah Thomas, and they learn to deal with the expectations of being the second-best team uh, in the Western Conference, that, to me, is the only team 
I, I don't think they can beat the Warriors. Cause what, cause what they, we can't even judge the Warriors until they get Boogie Cousins back. Right, right. That, that's you know, so, yeah. so, like, with just those three guys who are great, 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 great players, they're the team to beat. But when they get Boogie back, uh, that's what's going to – we can finally start judging them. But there's no – I knew the Celtics would struggle because they got – they got an overabundance of talent. Uh, Toronto's the best team in the East. I like what the Sixers did going out getting Jimmy Butler. They had to do something. Milwaukee's playing fantastic. Uh, but I think Toronto's the best team in the East, and the Warriors and the Denver Nuggets are the two best teams in the West. Charles Barkley with us. So everyone is curious about what the Lakers and LeBron are going to be this year. They struggled out of the gate, and I think they've, what, five of six or six of seven now. Uh, where are they in in this maturation process of trying to build a team around them, and what do you think are realistic expectations when push comes to shove? Well, I think they'll make the playoffs, and that's it. They're not one of the elite teams in the West. Uh, no, they, uh, I think they will make the playoffs. They'll be a six, seven, eight seed, and, and I think uh, I don't think they'll get past the first round of the playoffs. Uh, you know, they don't have a, a, a great team. LeBron's great, but they don't have a great team. Uh, I, I don't think the Lakers did Luke Walton any favors trying to decide whether they're going to go with old guys or young guys, and that's one of the issues they have. Uh, you know, because I said coming to the season, are they a young guy? Are they a good team with uh, a bunch of young players who are going to go forward with LeBron, or are they going to play all those old guys just to try to win some games? And I think they put Luke in a really bad situation because he don't know what to do. Am, am I trying to win games or am I trying to develop these young guys? And you can't do both. <laughs> Anybody think you can do both, you can't do both. you got to say, are we trying to win games or are we trying to develop these young guys? And I think a uh, great pickup by Tyson Chandler, but they got to make a decision. Are they going to play those old guys? Because they're not going to win the championship this year. they got to figure out who they're going to need going forward. So I think they should play all those young guys personally. Talking to Charles Barkley, TNT NBA analyst, I agree with you because those, those old guys, a number of them are going to be on that team next year when they try and reset with some other veterans to play with the younger guys. And, and Carmelo Anthony, is there a place, is there a team that he could go to to actually help make a push? Mike, that's a great question. I, I, I just don't know because I don't know what Carmelo's willing to do. He's got to be a backup He's got to be a spot player. Uh, when I mean spot, I don't mean spot up. I mean like you go some minutes. You probably some nights you probably gonna play twenty five minutes. Some nights you are gonna play ten or fifteen. And he gonna have to check his ego at the door because he he's been a hell of a player. He's been a great player for a long time, but he's not the same guy. Hey, Mike, you you know, uh, Father Time is undefeated. Mm-hmm. I've been saying that for twenty years. Father Time always gonna win. And I think he need to take some time and like and look at look at the landscape because just right now I look at that paper. I'm not sure where he can go uh, and make a difference. Talking to Charles Barkley again, breaking down the NBA. He's also in the pregame with Samuel L. Jackson for the golf match between Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. So let me let me end my question on this: If you're doing that pregame and say you're you're talking with Phil and Phil said, "Hey Charles, right now let's go to the first hole." Five thousand dollars. I say you won't even bogey it. Could you just bogey the first hole and get five thousand dollars? Well, I, I would definitely play it for five thousand dollars. <laughs> but you know, but I told. Listen, I'm gonna tell Phil first thing uh, Friday morning because you got to. It doesn't make sense to bet on Tiger because he's heavily favored. Right. So I'm probably gonna bet on Phil. So I did feel. I'm gonna say, Phil, you need to shut the hell up and quit worrying about me making bogey, and you win this match. <laughs> because Tiger is heavily favored. I'm not gonna bet two dollars to win a dollar, but I'm gonna bet a dollar to win too. So you better quit concentrating on my crappy golf game, and you better win this match. I have faith. I have faith in Charles. I've, I've actually been fortunate to play with Charles down at the old Jimmy V Golf Tournament. I have faith you could find a way to bogey that hole. I just want. I want to put out the good karma out there on Thanksgiving. Hey, I appreciate that. I, I listen. I'll make bogey. Yeah. 
The, the, some bogeys are better than yeah, others. There you There's go. no question That'd about be a good it. Good one. And any bogey made with with the bread truck on the golf course, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's a good bogey. All right, Charles, man, really good to talk to you. Have a great Thanksgiving. Don't burn down the house with that fried turkey. All right. Hey, man, you guys are fantastic. <laughs> Little Junior Golick out there, he's doing a fantastic job. You guys have a great Thanksgiving and happy Thanksgiving, to all the NBA fans out there. Thanks, Charles. You got Appreciate it man. it, man. Thanks okay. a lot. He's the best. I, listen, if I had to bogey, I'd just take, like, that's a short par four, right? It's 415 yards. Short par for them. For us, it's a little Well, I know, but, yeah. but, I mean, take, like, a four iron. Play the thing with a four iron. You right? should four not. Five, I mean. You should not hit a driver off Right. We're not hitting a driver off the. water on the left. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just try and keep it in and to, to bogey it, right? Yeah. Listen, remember, remember you, you probably don't, so I'll bring up an obscure golf reference and I'll get called out for it. Yeah, John Vandeveld's will. meltdown at the, the Open Championship. I actually do three. remember okay. that, yes. He actually went out there. He made a six. Made a seven. All he needed was a six to win. He went out there with a putter once and made a six. Yeah. Made a, all he needed was a double bogey. He made a triple bogey seven to get into a playoff where he lost. He went back a year later with a putter. That was a sponsored contest. He actually made a but six. But that's the best way to do it is make you take yeah. your own money out of your pocket. So it's one thing to say, can you bogey this, but yeah. take five or ten grand out of your pocket if you don't. That's why the side bets are going yeah. to be the more interesting thing here going forward. And by the way, Pat Perez, for those that don't know, he a little crazy. He's a pro golfer. A little cra- he's got the hair oh, really? down yeah, here. I, I don't. I don't. I don't Pat know much Perez about is, him. is a tour golfer who's decided I'm never going to work out and I'm never going to eat right, and he wins like once every two years. All he's, right, he's well, great. There you go. He's your guy. He's got a plan. He's, he's <laughs> and he's sticking to there it. There you go. And uh, you see his hair, and all I think is keep raging against the machine. Pat there you Perez. go. Rage against the machine. Support for the Golik and Wingo Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying homes for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a whole lot of anxiety with folks. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about it. They're calling it the power buying process, and here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. This gives you the strength of a cash buy. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all new exclusive rate shield approval. First, they lock your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. Now here's the best part. If rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. You win either way. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Golic. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data record, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Technology Truths, brought to you by GEICO. Technology Truths. Truth. Teenagers can communicate entirely in emojis. How was the birthday party? Pizza slice, kitten, soccer ball, pineapple? Truth. It's so easy to switch and save on car insurance at GEICO.com. What are you talking about? Paperclip, shoulder shrug, high five, wizard hat? What? GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Golgan Wingo with you, ESPN Radio, ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. We're getting closer and closer to finding out who will be in that final four in college football, and this weekend would go a long way, potentially, to seeing a shakeup or seeing the status quo. And with that, we're delighted to be joined on the Shell Penzo Performance Line by our next guest, and that, of course, is Kirk Herbstreet from College Game Day. Uh, Kirk, thanks for being with us this morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, real quickly, who do you think has more right to be upset this morning after the rankings? UCF, even though they moved up, or Washington State, who put 55 on Arizona in the first half and stayed where they've been since the rankings began? Oh, man, that's a great question. I, I would probably say Washington State, um, although I, I, I personally would have UCF uh, higher than where they are. Um, but I think you, you make a really good point about Washington State. Um I think a lot of people continue to look at them and, you know, the only people that matter are the people in that room, the committee, so who are subjectively ranking these teams. And maybe I don't know what it would be that that uh, is keeping them down other than maybe they're looking at their schedule, the non-conference schedule, and, and who they played in conference, you know, is, is maybe what's preventing them from having an opportunity to move up. I think what will be interesting is when they, they play in the Apple Cup on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, if they're able to win and then go into the Pac-12 championship game um, and, and play Utah, if they're able to win that, is, is that going to be enough if there's some wild craziness up above them 
because it, this is a, this is a really good team, and and if they don't if they don't get into the top four, it's still probably a big celebration in Pullman because they would still be Rose Bowl bound and, and headed to Pasadena with probably forty thousand of their closest friends. So, you know, I I know that we live in an era where people are so locked in on the four and seem somewhat disappointed if they don't make it. But uh, in Washington State's case, they. I think they would be celebrating, a, obviously, a magical year regardless. The more they're in the news, the more we hear from Mike Leach, the better off we all are because that's <laughs> just a dream come true <laughs> without question. All right, Herbie, listen, it, it this weekend centers around Ohio State-Michigan and Ohio State an underdog at home. So let's look at this game on the field. We know the Ohio State defense has been struggling some, but I want to talk about their offense against this great Michigan defense. Dwayne Haskins and this offense, what specifically do they need to do well against this Michigan defense, and can they do well? Oh, man, that's the matchup I think we all want to see. Um, We want to see Don Brown's defense. It's as aggressive as any defense in the country. Go up against Dwayne Haskins and, and the way Dwayne can throw that football accurately and has a really good group of wide receivers. Um, you know, I, I think that'll go a long way in determining who wins this game. For me, the, the Ohio State offensive line um, is, is a big factor in this game. And I'm sure Urban Meyer realizes that there's an advantage there for Michigan. Michigan gets pressure on the quarterback as well as anybody in the entire country. And they do it every single snap. In fact, that's their motto. They want to challenge you and make everything uh, something that's difficult to accomplish, whether you're running or throwing. And so they'll play a ton of press man. They'll play brackets where they take your best receiver and they double team him. Mm-hmm. And their their point is, we're going to get to you before you beat us in man coverage. And we're going to hold you up and do what we need to do. And they've got three outstanding corners that can lock you down for as long as it takes for, for that pressure to get to the quarterback. So with that being said, this is the best quarterback and the best group receivers that they've gone up against. So to me, can the Ohio State offensive line give Dwayne Haskins just enough time to be able to throw the football? I think they'll win some. I think they'll lose some. It's just a matter of whether or not he turns the ball over, and it's a matter of whether or not they hit some big plays. They'll need some explosives especially against the style of defense where Michigan, they just they roll the dice. They leave their guys on islands. It's more of an NFL approach and, and take chances, and they think they're better than you. And we'll, we'll see Saturday if they are. Yeah, Kirk Herbstreet with us from College Game Day. A lot of that is predicated on Chase Winovich, uh, Herbie, and the things he's able to yeah. do. Shea Patterson thinks he believes he's going to play. How critical is it for Michigan for him to be out there and doing that and getting that pressure? Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's the guy that coined the phrase, the revenge tour. The, the one thing from an intangible standpoint, and I, I'm a big intangible guy in college football because of the passion of 18- to 22-year-old guys, especially in a rivalry game, um, he, he, he and this senior class have been through so much. And, and I really believe, beyond the Ohio State game, being around their team, I've been so impressed with their approach. You know, they, 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 they check one off the board. It's not enough. You know, they, they win another one. It's not enough. This team has been through some serious growing pains, this senior class, going back to, you know, when Jim Harbaugh first got there. And you guys remember when people opened their preseason magazine, there were people, even some Michigan, own, their own fans, saying Jim Harbaugh is just not right, can't win the yeah. big game, can't beat Michigan State, can't beat Ohio State, blah, 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 blah. And that set into this, this senior class. They feel that. And so how big of a deal is he? He's the guy that is kind of the, the straw that mixes the drink. And so to have he, him there, it's more than just his ability to rush the quarterback. It's the leadership. Just seeing him out there I think would be very important for Michigan – because I really look at, at Winovich and Devin Bush, their inside linebacker, as the two guys that really provide that in the front seven. And um, I will be shocked, and I'm, I'm hoping he's okay, but I would be shocked if he's not able to go out and, and play uh, on Saturday and, and provide that, that spirit uh, for that Michigan defense. Herbie, in the bigger picture here, what does this game mean for Jim Harbaugh? I mean, there's been a lot of talk about him, and now if he wins this, which people think he will, all good. But if he loses this after the year they're having, right. long-term, what does this do? Well, I think for Twitter and for social media, it'll, 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 it'll be trending. Um, <laughs> I, think I don't on, think that's what he wants. On, yeah. 
No, no, I, I think I think he gets it more than anybody from playing in it and and now coaching. That uh, you know, you, people love you and cheer you know cheer you on when when you win games. And you're right, they're they're having a a magical year. And if they win, they'll be heavy freight favorites to go into Indianapolis, and and they'd be 60 minutes away from from getting into the playoff. And if you lose, you lose another game to Ohio State. And there are a lot of people that are around. You know, I've heard this week saying, "Man, if Michigan can't do it this year, when, when will they ever do it?" Man, that that is a scary way to take the field. And, when when you hear that, you know Michigan hasn't won in Columbus since 2000. I, I think Reese put up a graphic. Urban Meyer was an assistant coach at Notre Dame, a wide receiver coach at Notre Dame, the last time that they went to Columbus and won. So there's pressure on them, and there's an expectation on them that they've got to kind of embrace. Otherwise, you start to press and you start to kind of get out of the lane that you've been in all year, where you're just playing out there loose and having fun and, and believing in yourselves. And so I don't think it would do anything as far as the administration is concerned. But I think you would have a, a very frustrated and disgruntled fan base if they were to come up short Saturday in Columbus. Yeah, that that would absolutely be the case. And yes, if that happens, by the way, there will be mayhem. Yes, there will. And let me just say, Allstate knows that football season <laughs> is mayhem. <laughs> and that's why they're reminding fans that if mayhem can show up on game day, imagine what can happen the rest of the week. So get better protected with Allstate. All right, Herbie, Thanksgiving, best side dish? I'm a mashed potato. Like, I could take a bath in mashed potatoes. <laughs> so I, I, I Mental images. Mental potatoes. images. You know, I, I, I'm serious, man. I, and I'm one of these guys, you might not like this, Golik, but I, I, I'm a big, like, get all the sides. Some people, like, keep all the sides separate guy. Like, I have no problem just kind of, like, mixing them all together. Like, whatever's on the side, just it can become one big thing as far as I'm concerned if I get the right combination on the side of the turkey. So the mashed potatoes are the kind of the, the core value to the to that side for sure. Comple- what about you guys? Completely oh, yeah. agree. And yeah. I like the plain mashed potatoes just for your reasoning. Correct. Now you can mix in what you want to mix in and as much as you want to mix in from the other things on your plate. So I'm a hundred percent I have that I yeah. have that second on my list stuffing is is the number one side dish. Mashed stuffing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But putting the stuffing and the mashed potatoes together with oh, gravy, that's a win win. Chef's win win all yeah, the way. That's a, that's a total win. You guys got donut. I saw a picture go look on your, oh. on your, or your, uh, yeah. Twitter, you got donuts in there. Those look nice. Yeah, we, we have donuts every day that ends in Y. It's, here, a, yeah, so it's a new place opened up around here called Donut Crazy, and they, <laughs> they sent us some gifts, and we are we are in, really involved. We, in we the are gifts. embracing the <laughs> gifts. Are they gone? Just put it that way. Uh, they, there, there's there's some remnants left. Some crumbs. That's about it. I mean, that's about it. <laughs> we'll throw the crumbs in your mar- your your mashed potato you uh, b- uh, b- bathtub. Right, we'll do that. By, we'll by the way, how about the Monday night game? And it just it goes back to when I was working with you, Trey, in the, in the draft. Right. I, I'm telling you guys, Lincoln Riley told me before the draft, he said, you know, I used to have two or three NFL coaches come around, head coaches talking to me about offense philosophy. Last year I had like 30 come around. And I'm telling you, the more you watch the success of those offenses, the more we're going to see basically the Big 12, which to us, that game Monday night was the Big 12. Yep. Yeah. You're going to see the Big 12 on Sunday more and more and more and more quarterbacks and more philosophies coming out of that world. And it was, uh, it, it's frightening because it is. defense is as good as the NFL is and as talented and as athletic. You just can't account for that offense. You just can't. You can't. It's very t- challenging to stop it, obviously. Yeah. And I think we're going to see more of it. Yeah. Well, no question. Mike Leach said it was basically an air raid game. And, and as it a, was. And no as a question. former defensive player, I'm not overly happy about Oh, it, go eat your mashed potatoes. <laughs> All right, Kirk. Happy Thanksgiving, <laughs> Thanks, man. Herbie. We appreciate it. See you, man. All right, guys. Have a great Thanksgiving. You, you too, too, buddy. Lincoln Riley will be a head coach in the NFL. Oh, he will. Say, oh, he definitely will. And listen, I, the, the Browns would be smart to ask him now. I, I don't think he'll go now, and yeah. it's not, you know, you just don't snap Baker, your fingers. This is Lincoln, Lincoln, this exactly. Is oh, no, we know each other. Exactly. <laughs> We've met. You know about Blink Motion Activated Security Cameras, amazing technology for detecting anyone sneaking around your home or trying doors, and, of course, monitoring holiday package deliveries? Blink is inviting ESPN listeners to score massive savings during its Black Friday Cyber Monday event. Event. Go to blinkprotect.com slash radio and sign up for an alert when the sale starts. That's blinkprotect.com slash radio or hit amazon.com and search blink security. Blink is an Amazon company. 
All right, Golgan Wingo here with you, presented by Progressive Insurance. We will waddle with waddle. Well, he's a perfect guy to talk to about Thanksgiving. Yes, it when is. When you waddle after oh, you there eat you like go. that. Mm-hmm. We'll get into what's going on in Chicago in a second, but Mike, <laughs> I feel like we don't talk about this enough with you. You were a part of one of the greatest Thanksgiving Day games of all time in 1993. Yes. Your Miami Dolphins played the Dallas Cowboys, the Jimmy Johnson Dallas Cowboys, who were the defending Super Bowl champs and had ripped off, I think, after an 0-2 start, six straight wins or something like that to get back in contention. Uh, that was There was not snow, but a massive amount of ice fell in that game. It was a crazy game. And Pete Stojanovic was the kicker, if I'm not mistaken, yes. that year. And, you and there got, was snow. It wasn't ice. There, there was, was, there it was, was snow. It was like icy snow. It wasn't yeah. like, I mean, it was, it, but there was a ice-like quality to it. Okay. Um, don't get me <laughs> to go go but, yeah, but anyway, um, so there was, a, there was a chance to either win the game or tie the game. I can't remember at this point. I think it was to win the game um, with a late field goal. And the Cowboys came through and blocked the field goal. And, of course, when you yell, when you block a, a field goal or punt, what does everybody yell? Peter, Peter, poison, yep, poison. Yep. Don't touch it. Because as long as the team that blocked it doesn't touch it, the ball is dead, <laughs> and essentially the game is over. And out of nowhere, what happened? Uh, Leon, so we were we were actually, it was 14-13. So this yeah. was to win the game. To win the game. And so it got blocked. We, you, you hear the double thud. That, that's yeah. what you, you hear. You hear the kick of the ball. And you were on the special team. I was a right end on the, on the field goal team. Yeah. You hear the kick of the ball, and then you hear the, the, the double thud. And you're like, oh, my God. And then the ball goes past the line of scrimmage. And when you're on the defense, it is exa- whatever word you use, you get the hell away from the ball. Correct. So we were all, as long as on the field goal team, we all kind of got around the ball. It was on about the three-yard line, just spinning around. And so much so that it was just spinning there that that our guys were kind of messing around trying to push one of the cowboys like into the ball, just knowing they're not going to touch the ball. I mean, we're 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 screwed here. Right. And then this blur comes to, from my left, just sliding in. And it was Leon Lett oh. trying, thinking he had to recover it, and before it got to his hands, he kicked it with his leg into the end zone. We recovered it. They put it back on the three yard line where where he touched it. Right. And we got another shot. We got another chance to kick. We kicked it. We won the game 16-14. And, and I had heard after that that they had to have someone follow Correct. Leon Led home. He was so distraught. And when I got into this business with ESPN and I was doing Sunday Countdown stuff and doing Cowboy games, I would interview Leon Let, you know, and, and about the game going on. He was always a nervous guy in front of the media and such. Very much so. Such a good guy. Yeah. Such a real, and a heck of a player, by the way. Just known for, unfortunately, a couple of big blunders. Well, that, the thing that made it worse, that was the year after his blunder in the Super Bowl exactly. where Don exactly. Beebe caught him yep. from behind when he was stunting going yep. into the end zone. He thought he was going to get cut yeah. after that game. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson wasn't going oh, to no, cut him. He was such incredible. a good player. Out of Emporia State, yeah. by yep. the way. But all that being said, that was the last loss for the Cowboys that right. year. Right. They went on to win their final five games, mm-hmm. including that incredible game where uh, for the NFC Championship, uh, NFC East title against the Giants at the Meadowlands where Emmett played with one shoulder and they went on to win their second straight Super Bowl. But that is one of the most significant games in memory for a lot of yeah. uh, Thanksgiving Day fans. Yeah, and you were on right. the field for it. I was on it. the field for it. Yeah, stunned. Stunned. It was a nice win. We got out of Dodge. It was beautiful. Yes. And we never won another game the rest of the year. So now that's the amazing thing. Think we were about nine that. and two. Yeah, nine and two. We lost our last uh, five games. So last one in overtime against uh, the New England Patriots. Yeah. We didn't make the playoffs. Turned out to be the last game of my career as well. Crazy that that yeah. would be the way that turned out for both of those. What teams. my career? No, you mean? Oh, no. Okay. But, thought, uh, well, I was going to let that one slide. <laughs> what I was saying, you guys come up with an incredible play, an emotional win into yeah. a mini buy again. Made us nine and two. Made you nine and two. Nine and two. You would think we are in S- coasting to the yep. playoffs. Yep. And you guys didn't win another game. No, we did not. And the Cowboys didn't lose another game <sighs> and went on to win their second straight Super I like the way it worked out for them a lot better than it worked <laughs> out exactly for me right. and us as a team. So for everybody feeling like the playoffs are set, what you just said yeah. is an absolute reminder. There is still so much to play for across the NFL landscape heading into the Thanksgiving Day games, which start Week 12.